You know, it's exhausting, I think, for the players, the coaches, the fans. I just had one fan out there say I'm too old for this. Um, I'm starting to feel the same way. No, it's it's what conference play is all about. You know, uh, everybody kind of knows what everybody runs. Um, you know, historically, uh, this league has had so many close games that have decided, you know, league titles, NCAA tournament appearances. You look at last year, Oakland, Northern Kentucky at the buzzer. For the winning team goes to the championship. It's just what it is. You know, college basketball, there's nothing like it. That's why it's the greatest sport out there. Uh, that's why March Madness is great. But uh, happy for our guys. Um, you know, I thought we did an exceptional job on Antoine Davis. He, he's not a good player. He's a great player. Um, guys like him don't come often uh, in our league. He's really, really a special player. Um, has to be really special for Mike coaching him daily. Um, you know, I, I know I missed a lot of time for my family uh, coaching other, other uh, you know, other, other kids, and I don't regret that, but uh, there's probably nothing more meaningful than, than having a father-son uh, coaching. Um, so it's, it's really neat to see that. But, uh, you know, you got to tip your hats to those guys. They played so hard. Um, you know, I, I thought they got a good effort from a lot of different guys. Um, you know, Brad Calipari, I thought, played exceptional, um, made timely shots. You know, we would get it to six or eight, and he made big shots. But I think the crowd played a big part of it, too. Uh, we're starting to develop an identity. You know, we set the school record um, for a number of home wins in a row in the Division I uh, era. Um, not when we were Division Two, but since we've been Division One, So we talked about that as a group. We want to be part of history. It's why we all came here. Uh, we want to continue to build. Coach, the last possession, you guys finished with nine offensive rebounds, a third of them in that last possession to keep things going. I mean, that was just unbelievable. Well, Ryan, we got tough kids, you know. Uh, Nas Bahannon, uh, you know, I can't praise him enough. You know, he, he worked really, really hard this summer on his game and uh, when when your players are having success and your players are are developing and they're getting better um, and now he's hitting the game winner there's not there's not a better feeling you know that's why you get into coaching to watch these guys mature get better uh, but Garrett was tough I thought Devin Morgan was phenomenal he made maybe the play of the game at the end there he did not leave his man and he doubled Antoine Davis and got the ball out of his hands um, so those two particular plays were huge but that's who we are Ron we, we've talked uh, many times you and I we since we've been here we've got to reflect this city uh, we've got to embrace our city um, our city's been great to us since we've gotten here. Our kids have been out in the community, and you're seeing something special being built here. And now when we come back, we'll have students. Uh, we've got two on the road, and then we've got five straight home games. Uh, so um, it's going to be a big week. It's going to be an exciting week playing at Northern Kentucky and Wright State. Two teams been in the NCAA tournament and NITs and one league championships. And then we get back off the road. we got five in a row at home. So I think it's an exciting time, not only for our program, but also Coach Barnes as well. Well, you know, they like each other. Um, they have no egos. Uh, a lot of times on a team when you're coaching 18 to 22-year-olds, it can be difficult to blend personalities and roles. These guys have accepted their roles um, really, really good. They like being around each other, their family. They love being in Youngstown. Uh, they love the community. Um, you know, I heard a couple of them talk today. Uh, one of our parents uh, was telling me yesterday and uh, said he was at the mall, and people were talking about our team. You know, that hadn't happened here in uh, a couple years since we've been here. So it's nice to, to see our guys getting a little notoriety, but I think if you give them a chance, you come watch them, uh, you might get hooked because they play really hard. And once we eventually figure out how to score the ball, this team's going to be very, very dangerous because we can play defense um, really, really well. Yeah, I think that's a really good question. You know, a lot of times players um, think the coaches are getting more mellow. As, as say, when a guy comes in as a freshman compared to a sophomore or a junior, it's the total opposite. Players are developing. Players are getting more mature. They're starting to understand the system. Uh, we don't have to scream and yell, rant, rave about effort. Uh, the culture's in place now. 
Um, so that's that's exciting. We can come in every day and teach basketball. We're not teaching effort, um, but it takes some time. You know, when you when you bring in, uh, you know, when you inherit a program and you're trying to trying to implement your system, everybody's system's different. Um, you got to find the guys that fit your core values, the guys that uh, can play to your system and play to our strengths, and we have that. Um, you know, we, we've the last two games, our pressing has been really good. We haven't pressed a whole lot. That was a big part of, of the game plan, you know, Thursday and Saturday. We haven't really practiced it a lot. And they went out and, and kind of did it on their own. So I think it just speaks volumes uh, about the continuity that we have. You like this team, I think, as the conference shapes up the next couple of weeks in particular. I mean, what do you, you guys are right in the, in the thick of it. Yeah, we're we're right there. You know, obviously we we've got to go to Northern Kentucky on Thursday. Hard place to play. Um, great tradition, and then Wright State's the same. They're both very similar. Um, you know, you've got to win your home games, and, and you've got to find a way uh, to steal games on the road. Uh, what the magic number for a league title is, or really a top two seed. I don't know. I think the biggest thing we have to concentrate on is continuing to play with an edge, continuing to get better individually and collectively. And sometimes when you have success, you're going to come back a little bit hungrier because now we're getting a taste of it. You know, part of that changing a culture is having some success and then the behavior changes. And I'm seeing that. I think our fans are seeing that. Um, but it's a competitive league. You know, as we've won a couple. We could certainly be looking on the other end. So uh, you got to continue to have progress, continue to, to grind games out like this. And, uh, you know, you just you just keep playing and see what happens. You got to play good at the end of the year um, to, to make an NCAA tournament. Yeah, I would say that, Ron. Um, and they're starting to understand the concepts uh, of what we're what we're trying to do and the details. These guys now understand how small the little things are in scouting reports. Um, you know, in walkthroughs, we had a different we had a different edge about us today. Um, you know, it's a really quick turnaround. You play Thursday night, emotional game. You prepare tomorrow, uh, yesterday, uh, Friday, and then you walk through today. So that's a really quick turnaround. I think with the continuity, the eight guys we have coming back leading the way, that's why we won the game. Uh, I thought our guys deserved to win the game. Um, do feel bad for Detroit because you hate to see a team play that hard and lose. But, um, you know, it was just one of them games where the ball went our way.